In the podcast episode dedicated to Comet 3 Atlas that we did together with Ramon Naves, one of the most prominent figures both nationally and internationally within the amateur community, I already mentioned that we were going to start delving into a fascinating field, astrometry and photometry. With his vast experience, Ramon gave us some hints on how to take the first steps, and today I want to pick up that thread to tell you why this topic can be a real qualitative leap in the way you enjoy astronomy. Many of you know me as a professional photographer and an astrophotographer specializing in deep sky imaging. But perhaps not all of you know that my beginnings in astrophotography were actually in the planetary branch. In fact, in this other video from the Natural Portraits channel, which I'll link here, I talk a bit about my first steps in the world of astronomy. And precisely in that field, the contribution of amateurs to science has been, and continues to be, enormous. Organizations like ALPO or PBOL collect images taken by amateurs from all over the world, and from these, astronomers can carry out very precise scientific studies. With simple photographs of Jupiter, Saturn or Mars taken through our own telescopes, it's possible to measure changes in the atmospheres of these planets, track storms, analyze the evolution of cloud formations or even detect impacts. The amateur planetary community is a perfect example of how our images can be much more than just something aesthetic. They are data with scientific value. And I think that precisely because I started out in planetary imaging, I've always had that curiosity. To go beyond visual beauty? From the very beginning, I've been fascinated by the idea that measurements can be made from our images, information can be extracted, and knowledge can be generated. Of course, the artistic side of astrophotography is thrilling and gives us stunning images of the universe. But I've always been drawn to the idea of combining both things, beauty and science. Over the years, I began to specialize in deep sky imaging. That's probably the part you know best about me. But that curiosity never went away. And now, thanks to remote work and modern tools, I've been able to take it a step further. To start venturing into the field of astrometry and photometry. And we've done it in a big way, because from the Astrogredos Observatory, we're already collaborating with some of the active photometric campaigns, and we've already made our first detections and measurements of asteroids. And you could do it too, if you want. Let me tell you how. It might sound a bit intimidating because we usually associate the word science with large observatories, professional astronomers, or even space missions. But the reality is that amateur astronomy has been collaborating with the scientific community for decades, and today more than ever we have technology within reach of enthusiasts that allows us to turn our small astrophotography setups into genuine data collection centers. A perfect example of this is astrometry. Basically, it consists of precisely measuring the position of an object in the sky. It may seem simple, but those measurements are fundamental for calculating and refining the orbits of asteroids and comets. The Minor Planet Center, or MPC for example, receives thousands of measurements every day from amateurs all over the world. And it is this data that allows us to know exactly where those objects will move in the future. Literally, the safety of humanity depends on it. And no, they do not use large telescopes to monitor the trajectories of these objects, it's simply impossible for professional observatories to cover the vast number of asteroids and minor bodies in the solar system. Basically, they just wouldn't be able to keep up. It's the amateurs with their own equipment who supply data to this organization. Another example is photometry. Here, what we do is measure the brightness of celestial bodies, and with something so simple, we can study variable stars, detect and measure supernovas in other galaxies, or even observe the transits of exoplanets. Or rather than observe, we could say measure the transits of exoplanets across the stars they orbit, because when these planets pass in front of their star, they cause a dip in the intensity of its light. And this is something we can measure ourselves. One of the most recent campaigns we've participated in was the measurement of the supernova that was detected in the NGC galaxy, 7331. In this case, projects like the American Association of Variable Star Observers rely on the ongoing collaboration of amateur observers who provide crucial data for monitoring variable stars. 
Stars that vary in brightness for various reasons, such as exoplanet transits, the rotation of dust clouds around them, or simply because they naturally fluctuate in brightness, like Cepheid stars. And all of this, I insist, does not require a 2 meter diameter telescope. With equipment like what many of you have at home, or even with modest remote setups, it is perfectly possible to obtain data of scientific quality. As I mentioned a moment ago, from the Astro Gredos Observatory, we have made our first detection of asteroids. We achieved this with a 90mm aperture refractor telescope, a 500mm focal length, and a color APS-C sensor camera connected to it. With this setup, we have managed to record asteroids with a magnitude of 18, extremely faint. Seeing those images where a tiny dot moves among the stars, and realizing that this dot is a rock out there orbiting, is something that changes your perspective. Because suddenly you're not just taking a pretty picture, you're participating in the tracking of a real object. In real time, together with other observers from all over the world. And this experience made me reflect on something very important. Remote observatories, which are becoming more accessible every day to any astronomy enthusiast, like Cosmoscape's telescope hosting or its innovation hub, the Astrogredos Observatory, not only allow you to capture spectacularly beautiful images, but are also gateways to citizen science. Until a few years ago, having a permanent setup in an observatory was something reserved for just a few people. Nowadays, more and more enthusiasts are installing their telescopes in dark automated locations with internet connections. And that opens up a huge opportunity for us. Not only can we photograph whatever we want from anywhere in the world, but we can also dedicate part of our observation time to scientific projects. For the past few weeks, the observation time of my remote telescope has been divided. Part of the night is dedicated to capturing scientific data, and the other part to capturing aesthetic data. Because yes, as someone passionate about astronomy, I love both fields. And as I've already told you, those of you who have a permanent remote setup or are thinking about installing one have the opportunity to do the same. So, if you're interested in this topic, I once again recommend that you listen to the Astrogredos podcast episode with Ramon Naves. There you'll find very useful tips to get started. These are steps that may seem complex, but with the experience of people like Ramon, they become much more accessible. And with that said, would you like us to go deeper into these topics on Astrogredos? Let me know down in the comments. Astrophotography doesn't have to be just about aesthetics. With a bit of curiosity and the right tools, we can contribute valuable data and become part of a global citizen science community. And I assure you, there are few things as rewarding as knowing that your telescope, while you sleep, is helping us understand the universe a little better. See you again in the next Astrogredos video.